Hello, Matu Jamir, and you're watching Hornbill TV's Prime at 9. In a convergence, as it was called, at the launch program of the 70-foot bridge called the People's Bridge, which was constructed in Longpang under the joint venture of Eulatrius Christian Society, the Hans Foundation, various government departments such as the PWT, PHED, RD, the AR, BRO, and especially the community of villages in and around the area, the Chief Minister of Nagaland, Nipurio, said that this type of initiative should be an eye-opener and implemented in all districts. Saying that the People's Bridge has been built to multiply the fruits of hard labor, the Chief Minister reiterated that this type of model should be taken to other areas and that the government will be supportive in this type of ventures. The program was held at Hotel Vivor in Kohima today. Let's have a look at the detailed report. The eastern districts of Nagaland, bordering Myanmar, are the most underdeveloped districts in the state, requiring urgent improvement in many areas. Health is a major challenge. They come under the most underdeveloped districts in Nagaland and are listed among the four high-priority districts in the state by NHM. The performance of the districts on critical health indicators are lowest in the state. In the year 2010, the then Principal Secretary of the Department of Health and Family Welfare, Menukul John, visited Longpang PHC, during which time ECS initiated a dialogue with the NHM, which now has become the only PHC in the entire country where doctors and nurses are appointed by the community and salary comes from the Department of Health and Family Welfare. To meet the basic health needs of the people, ECS started running the Longpang PHC on a public-private partnership model between the Department of Health and Family Welfare, the Government of Nagaland, and the community. The 20-bedded PHC now provides round-the-clock services and is equipped with all the essential diagnostic facilities such as X-ray, ultrasound, ECG, CBC, and biochemistry analyzers, and a mother-child center with a fully functional labor room with its independent portable ultrasound machine and essential neonatal resuscitation equipment. One problem, however, has been access to health, particularly by remote villages to the PHC. In the year 2014, the villagers around the PHC met to discuss on-road linkage. For eight villages beyond the river, it took them almost three hours since there was no bridge and had to travel 30 kilometers upstream and 30 kilometers back to the PHC. The villagers felt only if they could raise funds to build a bridge. A bridge was then built over the Yejung River by the community using locally available resources. Unfortunately, the bridge got washed away by flood waters the following monsoon. Despite this huge loss, the community once again decided to go further downstream and rebuild the bridge at a safer location. The village councils and church took the lead for the building of the second bridge as well and SHG mothers and members of the Mothers Club came to support the initiative. ECS helped mobilize the support to build this bridge. Through a massive convergence effort between various state departments such as the Public Works Department, MGNREGA, the Border Roads Organization, DEF Twensang, Assam Rifles, the local MLA, PHED, and individual donors and friends of ECS, the construction was initiated. Other noteworthy funder was the Hans Foundation, who put in almost 60% of the cost. Young people came to help paint the bridge and many churches came to help in constructing wooden culverts on the link road. This convergence effort led to the building of a 10-kilometer link road and a 70-foot bridge that links the road and the bridge and this is the perfect example of how convergence of state, funders and the community can do wonders. Funders and contributors include the Hans Foundation with 47 lakhs, contribution by seven village councils with 6 lakhs, Department of RD with 8 lakhs and committed rupees 10 lakh. Department of RNB committed rupees 15 lakh and contributed 11 lakhs. ECS raised in all 10 lakhs. The local MLA with 15 lakhs. Digital Analog Bangalore with 2 lakhs. Brett and Gary in the USA, 3 lakhs. Catherine and Michael Colby Charities with 1 lakh 15,000. Funders and contributors in kind included BRO with 100 bags of cement, 
Army with JCB for 10 days, DEF with three truckloads of sand, the PHED with three trucks for transporting girders from Dimapur till Bridge Point valued at 2,10,000. Churches provided food throughout the year for all workers on site and the CEO of ISB Infrastructure Private Limited reduced bridge costs by almost 4 lakh as part of his contribution. I assure you, I will visit the place. And I have just seen the video clips. But I would like to come, see myself, and also talk to the community. And I want to thank them. This should be an eye-opener and this should be implemented in all the districts, wherever it is required. I will discuss with my colleagues, and we will see how we can partnership the convergence of various departments with the trust or foundations who will also come forward. And then the community should take the responsibility, the ownership. Only then it is possible. You are aware, not only in Nagaland, but in the country also. The government undertakings, the PSUs, all felt economically not viable. And that's why during Vajpayee, Prime Minister time, and even is going on very strongly. Not investment to the PSUs, pub public undertakings, but it is this investment now. Everything, even lettuce is the Air India sold. There was no takers. But when they keep on pestering that somebody should take over, finally Tata and Sons took over because they had started that Air India. And that's why it has gone back to them. And we hope that our services will be much better now. So we have so much recognition about our tradition. We have. Uh, UN, uh, UN awards also for communitization. And we have recognitions even in customary law. And that's how even the country came forward about this method of fast track court. Our customary court doesn't take time, doesn't cost you, and keep people, uh, give justice, and keep people happy. The initiative taken, this model should be taken to other areas as I expected. And my government will be supportive in this joint venture. Unless the stakeholders take the ownership. There are so many schools, buildings done, but it is not run properly. I used to comment, the best school, uh, the best building in the village is the church building. The biggest, the best, and the worst building is the school building. So we have to see that our schools are made attractive for the students to spend time. And coming together bring changes. And therefore, we should multiply this concept uh, can you tell us more about this whole new concept of convergence that, uh, you know, the whole uh, function that we've been talking about with everyone and can you just tell us a little bit more if this is a new concept that should be taken very seriously? Yeah. 
Actually, um, I think in a state like Nagaland where we are having resource constraints, uh, I think this is a beautiful way of, you know, different people with their own capabilities coming. Because here in this bridge, what we saw was, uh, you found that the engineers came and designed the bridge. Um, then uh, the CM Corpus Fund came and said, okay, we would like to, you know, put in resources. Then the local MLA came and said, okay, because if you look at that bridge, it would have costed us around three, four crores. But the fact that the villagers came and they broke the stones and, you know, it made as though that the bridge was doable. I think that is uh, the beauty of it. But I think the most important thing is besides government bringing their expertise and their resources, I think it's also about communities owning the process and saying this is our bridge. I think that's more sustainable in the long run where people don't look at it as a government bridge or a government school building or, you know. So I think the challenge is how do we get people to own it? And I think the way forward for Nagaland is can we find this interface of, you know, different uh, agencies and departments rather than doing things in isolation? Can they come together and forge alliances, you know, within the different bodies? There is only so much communities can do with their legs and hands. And there are limitations to that. And so that is where getting the hardware was the challenge, you know. Um, so here, one of the challenge was also getting the people to understand that ultimately, look, this is for you. And because normally, uh, local communities would say, is it our responsibility to build roads? Is it our responsibility to build bridge? Shouldn't the government build a bridge? You know, So f for getting communities to come together, the church or villages to say, look, let's not wait for government to come. Let us do it on our own, was I think one of the uh, major challenges. Yeah. Then, of course, getting uh, convincing people to come in, getting the departments to work together, was definitely a challenge but I also the beautiful thing that I saw in this experience was this time it was people making convergence happen I think it was the other way around where the people reach out to border roads people reach out to PHED people reach out to road and bridges and so I think and I'm beginning to wonder was it easier for convergence because people ask them to come and and so these were some of the lessons that we learned in this project. So do you think uh, right now our government is ready for that as well, to for departments to come together? And also, will it be a little more easier because we do have our bureaucrats that get transferred from one department to another, so they have a certain experience, certain knowledge of that department. So converging, would it be easier? I think, um, I think it's uh, I, the, the whole thing is about perception, and that whole mindset uh, because I think uh, if you look at the government structure you have compartments and you don't work beyond your compartment and I think we don't have a culture of doing things together and so I think if we can break that barrier and perceive it in a different way that we're all actually here to do the same thing uh, I think that's possible but I mean if you honestly ask me if the government is ready I would say uh, it will take time, but I think the outcomes outweigh the challenges, you know, the positive outcomes outweigh the challenges. So uh, it just needs one or two good people within different agencies or departments or in the community to break that um, glass ceiling and say, look, let's think out of the box and come. This is what we ought to be doing. I think it's easy if we do it together. Uh, so that kind of an idea, if it comes and seeps into the psyche of our leaders. Uh, finally, of course, it definitely needs political will. The government has to say that, I mean, doing things together, convergence has to become our culture of doing things. Now, how do we do that? It's only when the chief minister himself says, this is the way it's going to happen, so we have to work together. And think, I think it's possible. Uh, for a small state like Nagaland. Uh, with these few projects that uh, you are also here for, uh, what is the biggest challenge you have uh, faced in Nagaland as a state? 
communication, the road network, that uh, uh, that makes it difficult, you know. Like I'll give you an example. Recently, we conducted a survey in uh, Pasau. Pasau is a village in Mon. It is one of the easternmost villages, very close to Myanmar. Uh, and I had we had a team of uh, professional surveyors, including a doctor and few ladies who came uh, for a survey before we set up our medical project there. So uh, for them to reach Pasau became a challenge, you know. They had to midway change a vehicle and then go across the uh, the difficult place which the vehicle could not uh, cover. So that's such and then to do the survey which was planned over a week, it took 10 days because the traveling was so that that road network is a challenge indeed so uh, how many people in you know according to your survey is going to benefit from this uh, people's bridge oh people's bridge is like 8700 odd households so you can imagine 30 to 40000 people who will actually get connectivity so this is going to be like uh, uh, i think a major uh, help to the locals. The People Bridge will benefit many nearby villages where around 8,700 households and around a population of 35 to 40 thousands are going to be benefited. Nagaland government is trying hard to develop Nagaland in the areas of communication and connectivity. Your old demand of the people have been fulfilled by integration of People's Bridge.